Good morning, friends. I've spent a lovely day here in Raghurajpur in Odisha, having spoken to Narayan Babu with regards to the palm leaf art that you, we just saw, and uh, also came to know that in these parts of my country, there's quite a high prevalence of diabetes, and a significant proportion of them are on tablets. And like I guess rest of India as well, there are myths about treatment with insulin and about lifestyle and about a lot of people actually still using Ayurvedic medicines and other stuff. So I'm going to talk to you about again, re-highlight the need for insulin, the myths about insulin and about the need for early insulin initiation. Now we are all aware by the time an individual develops diabetes, 50% of the beta cells are already gone. And over a period of time, there is going to be a gradual decline of the beta cell function. This is in addition to all of the other postulated pathophysiological mechanisms which lead to diabetes. So usually what we find is after an individual is diagnosed with diabetes, he hopefully undertakes certain changes in lifestyle and thereafter drugs are started, maybe one drug, then maybe the dose of that drug is escalated and then a second drug, a third drug and a fourth drug. Now, this approach of treating only when you fail and not titrating is almost a certainty that you will actually have periods of uncontrolled hyperglycemia leading to a bad legacy and leading to complications of diabetes. Therefore, we must realize that treatment with insulin in India has to be initiated relatively earlier so that you're not treating to fail, but you're treating to succeed. And when you're talking about the various treatment options of insulin, there are several different regimes of insulin. And in India, still, market survey shows that premixed insulins sell more or they are the insulins of choice when it comes to initiation of insulin. That's probably because by the time we start insulin in our patients with diabetes, we are already way too down the road in terms of the management. And ideally, we should be starting insulin much, much earlier than what we are doing right now. We've got to break away with the inertia. We've got to break away with the myths and start insulin. Now, when you talk about insulin therapy, you know, there are two kinds of insulin that would be deficient in an individual, the basal insulin and the prandial insulin. If you're actually initiating insulin early, in most of our patients, you will find early on the insulin deficiency that you have will be predominantly basal insulin deficiency. So if you find someone who's not reaching targets with two drugs or three drugs, and better still if you have someone who's already on two drugs and you're thinking of escalating therapy and you see that the HP1C is already above eight, it's probably wiser to switch over to insulin than rather than flogging the tired horse with another tablet or two. And if you then look at the international guidelines, for example, AACE talks about using basal insulin therapy after two drugs have failed if the HP1C is more than 8%. There would, of course, be other circumstances where you would initiate insulin. This would be individuals with organ dysfunction like liver disease, like kidney disease, individuals coming into the hospital because of emergencies, infections, heart attacks, strokes, and of course, during pregnancy, insulin is the drug of choice. So like I've stated, in terms of the basal insulin, it's a relatively easy insulin to start with. You take one shot a day and there's no relationship with the food intake. You gradually titrate the dose so that the fasting blood glucose is normal. So again to highlight, start insulin early and like most guidelines suggest, if you actually start insulin on time, the commonest and possibly the best insulin therapy that you're going to start insulin initiation with is going to be a basal insulin, something like Clargin. Over a period of time, as things worsen, you will actually have to add prandial components of insulin, including it could be premix, co-formulations, or even basal bolus insulin. If we treat our patients with insulin properly, early, aggressively, and achieve targets, with proper monitoring and avoidance of hypoglycemia, I'm quite sure that your patient and my patient will do really well in terms of the outcome of management of type 2 diabetes.
You know, we as Indians, we travel to so many places, not only in India, but abroad. We go to Egypt and we buy papyruses and bring them back. And we talk about art in other places on earth, which we admire and which we promote. It is rather unfortunate that we don't promote our own art. And we should be much more proud of what the Indian culture is all about. Indian art is all about. And we should be promoting these artisans to actually ensure that this art form does not die out and that these people live a meaningful life as well. My name is Dr. Omikrishnan Neji and I'm going to start speaking now. Access to diabetes care is very important in terms of knowledge about diet, physical activity, monitoring, medications, including injectables like insulin. It's very important for access to be there. And we know that the burden of diabetes in the world is huge. And in type 1 diabetes, insulin is the treatment of choice. And in type 2 diabetes, where people do not respond to diet, exercise, medications, uh, oral medications, it's time to uh, give insulin. And this slide shows the number of people between the age of 20 to 79 years with diabetes globally and by the International Diabetes Federation regions. One look at the slide will tell you that the prevalence of diabetes is high and the predictions are diabetes is going to become an even more prevalent disease, say in 2030 or 2045. So the prediction is the global burden of diabetes is set to increase uh, by a significant proportion over the next few decades or so. This slide again shows the number of people with diabetes globally and by IDF region. And in fact, you will see the increase that is projected or is occurring is highest in Southeast Asia, which includes countries like India. So I think it's very important that we as Indians understand that diabetes is a huge epidemic and the burden of diabetes complications is such that we in our country need to be prepared to treat patients so that they do not suffer from diabetes complications and better still, if we can prevent diabetes, especially type 2 diabetes, it can be prevented and we can prevent it through lifestyle modifications. That's very important for the world and for India as well. The question here is also that if you look at diet, exercise, monitoring, medications, and of course we are talking about insulin here, and specifically with regard to insulin, does everyone have access to insulin? Well, 33 million people with type 2 diabetes do not have access to insulin, and this number is slated to increase because if you look at Professor Sanjay Basu, who is an assistant professor of medicine at the Stanford University, it is reported that he said that current levels of insulin access are highly inadequate compared to the projected need. And it's very important that countries like uh, countries in Asia and Africa, where the diabetes burden is felt most. You know, the diabetes is the disease where the huge burden of the disease coexists with problems such as accessibility, affordability in the real world. So we need to, uh, you know, be mindful that diabetes treatment is helping everybody with the disease. And we are reaching out to all the needy people in the world who need diabetes care. So if you look at what the uh, WHO has said, people with diabetes who depend on life-saving insulin you know, there are some people with type 1 diabetes, for example, they require insulin. And it's important that that access to an affordable insulin is very important to people with type 1 diabetes because type 1 diabetes is an endocrine disease, as you know, with insulin deficiency. And insulin is the treatment which is life-saving for people with type 1 diabetes. Indeed, people with type 1 diabetes, we know that if insulin is given and gl glycemic parameters are corrected, People with type 1 diabetes are actually protected from diabetes-related complications. So friends, insulin access, affordability and quality, particularly because we're talking about type 1 diabetes here, and of course, insulin requiring people with any form of diabetes uh, who require insulin and who need insulin, I think all the stakeholders involved in diabetes care should prioritize affordable, 
availability of insulin, uh, which is especially in life-saving situation to people with diabetes who require it. If you look at the IDF, the IDF estimates that insulin accessibility and affordability is very important and proper access in not just insulin, but also in medicines and supplies. And to my mind, not just access to insulin, medicines and supplies, access to the right information. Today, people require right information about diet, exercise, uh, monitoring, uh, uh, knowledge about diabetes. And it is, it is said that to know about diabetes is to say no to diabetes. And solutions for improving access uh, include increased education of healthcare pro professionals. So educating not just doctors, but diabetes educators, nurses, nutritionists, physiotherapists, people involved in day-to-day -day diabetes care, as well as providing high quality generic medicines, biosimilars, and also coming together of experts in different domains, experts in health economics, uh, experts in, in insulin uh, production, uh, uh, in um, medication production, uh, doctors, uh, dietitians, uh, physiotherapists, patients, patient association, and the population at large, all these people could come together at, and look at solutions at the regional as well as global levels and an appropriate affordability of medications, particularly insulin access for people who are dependent on insulin, like type 1 diabetes is very important. And equally important is the role of lifestyle advice, as I said, improving uh, medication adherence, uh, monitoring, and also when you look at medication, taking medicines the correct way, for example, taking insulin the right way, the right technique of insulin administration, and that awareness to healthcare providers is essential. These are some of my thoughts on diabetes in the world and for our country, India, and for us to make sure that all people with diabetes are looked after with the best possible care. Thank you so much, friends, for listening to me. It's been a pleasure discussing this topic with you. It's not just about a livelihood. He wants to bequeath something as a legacy to the next generation. He doesn't want that art to die. And he wants it to live forever. And I think that Mr. Arup Malaka, his work is very important. It is very relevant in today's time. And especially that this is a paramparic kala, which is not a responsibility of keeping it. It is also important to us that we इस कलात्मक रूप को जारी रखें।